Now we can run to that back thing in here. Yeah. Yes, that's the same, yeah. Yes, man. What Hey guys, welcome back to another video at Yvonne and Whitney's Kitchen. So today guys, it's Sunday. We need a little rest. So I actually came up with an easier dish to prepare today. And I just really wanted some meat without having to actually, you know, pressure anything or do all of that. So what I'm doing today is actually some bacon and chicken fried rice. Guys, I'm excited already for it. It is going to taste so fantastic and flavorful. So what on there? Your bow bacon and chicken your run come. <laughs> Guys, she was sitting around that side of the house and as she your bow bacon and chicken, Mrs. She fly come in. How you even bend down that far? <laughs> and guys she bend down. Creep I go on guys, my cry I grow. But but yeah, yeah, she's here. So I'm gonna be just showing you guys what you actually need to make the bacon fried rice. It's pretty simple. It's one of those things that's really quick and easy. And the plus side of this, you can use leftover rice, right? Eh? Um, it's better to actually use leftover rice from the day before. So your rice grain does not stick together while you're making the fried rice. So let's get into it. You see how I smile big door? No, sir. Maybe you can chicken where you're about making a muso. All right, guys. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to show you the ingredients. <laughs> All right, guys, so like I said, here are the ingredients. Pretty simplistic. I just have some bacon here, some chicken breast over there, some scallions, onions, garlic, and three eggs. Um, now, a reason why I'm not using any scotch bonnet this time, I actually got this from the store, which is hot soya sauce. So I'm going to see how this works out. I still have a little bit of my actual soy sauce here. So I'm going to be mixing both of them and see how it turns out in terms of taste. But yeah, those are the ingredients, apart from my rice, of course, because my rice is still in the fridge. I'm going to take that out when I'm ready, actually, because I don't want it to be room temperature when I'm ready. I want it to be cold. So we're going to get into it. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is get my chicken breast washed. As I don't know, we can't use meat that isn't washed around here. It needs to get off all of that slime and the membranes off of it because it still does come on the chicken breast. So we're going to head on over to the sink and do that real quick. All right, guys. So we're going to get our chicken breast washed. So I'm actually just going to be using some lime to do this. So I just squeeze out the juice and drop those in there. What I like to do now is actually just rub the lime against it so it's easier. This actually removes a lot of the slime easier than if you were to do it with your hands. So actually rubbing the lime against it is really, really great. So that's why I just like to drop it in when I'm washing it with it. Helps a lot to get off all of those membranes and everything. And guys, look at that water. Look. There's really so much fat and slime on meat in general, even if it's the least fatty part of the meat. Even if it's the most lean part, you still have some fat to some degree on it and the membranes and slime. So that's why I like washing my meat. Because people still ask me, actually, I still get questions about why we as Jamaicans wash our meat or people in the Caribbean in general. But it's not for bacterial purposes at all. It's literally just to get the slime and 
the membranes off of it. We're just going to wash this again. You can see the difference in the water. The water is so clear now, guys. So I'm satisfied with how this is washed right now. I'm just going to drain this off and actually get onward to prepping it. So the whole seasoning process and everything, which is going to be pretty simple, like I said. This is one of those dishes that you can put together very quickly without a need to do too much. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So we're actually just going to get our chicken cut up. Now, when you're cutting it up, you want smaller pieces. You don't need anything too big because, to be honest, it's just going in the fried rice. You want to be able to see the pieces of meat, but you just don't want to be biting into huge pieces of meat. So you just want some bite-sized pieces that are going to cook very quickly. And chicken breast is something that dries out very fast. So you want to make sure that you don't cut it too thick either. That's why I'm cutting along the grains and separating it like this. So I actually have thinner cuts of meat. So this is exactly how I'm going to cut every piece to ensure that I get exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. And then once we finish cutting, we're going to season this up. So yeah, Mommy Yvonne was really excited about my fried rice, and I know exactly why. Whenever we go to Chinese restaurants, they tend to have a habit of not putting much in the fried rice at all. So, <laughs> so there was actually this one time I went to a Chinese restaurant. I ordered special fried rice, and you know special fried rice is supposed to be a mixture of meats. So normally they give you like shrimp and chicken in it or something else like beef or pork. But when I looked in my rice, there was nothing in it. Like I, I just saw one piece of chicken and I didn't even get any shrimp. So I had to really look at it and be like, huh, um, did y'all get my order wrong or something? Like, did you think I just ordered chicken fried rice maybe? And even then, it still couldn't be counted as chicken fried rice because there was only one piece of chicken in it. And they were like, oh, no, it's the, it's the right order. I had to really take a look at my plate and just be like, hmm. Oh, well, I'm going to have to call it a day because this isn't looking right. So from a longer time, if I go to Chinese restaurants, I don't get any form of special fried rice or chicken fried rice or any of that i just tend to go for the regular fried rice and i order um dishes with it so like malaw chicken um, pepper steak roast chicken all that stuff so i like to make fried rice at home that has meat in it if i'm calling a special fried rice So yeah, we're well on our way. And for those of you who are curious about the amount of rice I'm actually using, it was three pounds of rice. And I actually wanted to use four, but Mommy Ivan was the one that bought the rice. And she told me that I'm too craven and awful when I asked her <laughs> why she only bought three pounds. But guys, it's fried rice. And for those of you who don't know, Chinese food, after you eat it, actually makes you feel hungrier for some reason. That's always been the case with me. I can eat a ton of Chinese food, especially the fried rice. And when I'm finished eating, like 10, 15 minutes after, I'm hungry again. So whenever I'm making this, I like to use quite a lot of rice. 
So if you guys are going to make this, I'd, I'd rather you do the four pounds than the three pounds. If you have a family big as mine, or even if you're just eating it yourself, you can still have it for the next day. It does not go bad quickly, so you can have it in your fridge for quite some time before you actually finish it. Because trust me, when you guys try this recipe, you're not going to want to go back to any other fried rice recipe. And I'm telling you, this is one of the best because it's simple, but it carries so much flavor. And that's literally why I'm eating it alone. Like, you know, normally you'd make dishes with fried rice. But this type of fried rice, you can eat it all by itself. You don't need any extra dishes. You don't need a main dish. This is the main dish. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. And you guys already know, when you see Mommy Yvonne jump up like that in any video, it's because I'm making something that she really, really loves. I don't even know how she bent that far, to be honest with you. Like, I just saw the head going back behind the stand, and I looked down, and when, it, when I looked down, it was her. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to really take a second look and wonder if I'm seeing what I'm seeing on the camera. I thought you had back issues. Aren't you, aren't you the same person who was saying your back's hurting? And guys, as soon as I said bacon and chicken, there she was. That's absolutely crazy, though. But it shows you guys just how much she loves what I'm making right now. Which is the goal. You gotta make sure whatever you're making is suitable to your taste or your family's taste, whoever you're cooking for. And that's what a lot of people tend to misunderstand about cooking. They generally find recipes online and try to follow those when they're just learning how to cook. But a lot of those times, those recipes turn out terrible. Why? Mainly because those recipes are made for people with different tastes from you. So when you're just learning how to cook, it's better advised to learn the techniques rather than memorize recipes. When you learn the techniques first, you can incorporate them into anything, any form of a dish, and make it your own. So many people ask me how I learned to cook. I started off by watching mom. Then I moved on to actual food networks and shows where I could learn how I can actually use specific techniques to get what I want out of food. Because I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of the food that I saw being cooked did not appeal to me in the way that it was prepared. So, for example, a lot of you guys know that people do their eggs sunny side up. Now, as a Jamaican, you can imagine, I never tried that, and I don't think I ever will. It just looks a little disgusting to me. Not gonna lie to you guys. But I know I can actually make the egg in that specific way and tailor it to my taste. So I can make it a little bit more well done because I know the techniques to use. So technique is really important, guys. For those of you who keep asking me how you can learn how to cook, learn the techniques first. There are many cookbooks. There are many masterclass videos on YouTube for free. Learn your techniques first, and I promise you, you will not be disappointed. So we're going to be moving back to our chicken over there. Now it's time to start our seasoning process, actually. So I'm going to get some chicken seasoning on this meat. A little bit of ginger seasoning. Some jerk seasoning. And we're going to get some season to the bone into this as well. Just a little bit more of that because I like the spice that it adds to it. And the final powdered seasoning that we're going to be using is some black pepper. Now, 
Now guys, we're going to be marinating this in soy sauce, so you don't need much seasoning on the chicken. Because the soy sauce does actually have a salty taste to it, for those of you who don't know. So you just want to pour some over the chicken, it's going to marinate in that. You just want to get a good coating of that into it. And I'm also going to add some pepper flakes, just a few. That adds a little texture to our chicken and a little hint of spices. We're just going to mix this around and leave it to marinate. And guys, you can do all of this as soon as you get up in the morning, pretty early. So when it's time to actually put your fried rice together, you just throw the stuff into the pot and you're good to go. All right. Now our chicken is done. It's time to cut up our bacon and get everything onto the stove. Because we're going to actually start cooking them and we're just going to chop our seasonings up in the meantime. So everything just gets done in a certain period of time. All right, so here we have our bacon. And like I mentioned in a few videos before, I do like the thicker cut of bacon. For this specific reason, when I'm making certain dishes, I just like the thicker cuts. To me, it's just better. And it's not as salty as the thinner strip bacon that you get in the stores. So this one is my go-to. It's been my go-to for a while now. So I recommend this if you guys can actually get it where you're at. The thin strips are fine too. It's just that I really, really love this one. So this one is just cut to a point where it's almost like pork belly. But it actually is just thicker cut bacon. The pork belly has a different cut to it. <laughs> so Mommy Yvonne is looking again. I've turned around about five times now and seen her still looking. Are you hungry, Mommy? You're hungry? Guys, even when she eats, you know, I know when I hear this in every video, you know, but even when she eats, she's still hungry. As soon as I start making food, <laughs> she's hungry again. So don't think I have her over here starving, please. She just always gets hungry whenever I'm about to make something. So her stomach gets prepped pretty early on for whatever I'm going to make. <laughs> So I'm just going to be cutting everything like this, guys, until I'm done. All right, guys. So I'm actually going to be adding my bacon into the pot now just to get it cooking. Meanwhile, I cut up these seasonings and everything. And no, I do not use any oil when I'm making this cook-up. I actually want the bacon grease to be one of the main flavor points of this dish. So that's why I'm actually making it this way. So I, the bacon can release its own fat and I can cook everything in that. So like I said, we're just going to cut these seasonings up in the meantime. So we're prepped and ready for everything.
One thing I forgot to mention, you guys can actually use a shallot or purple onion because those are actually a little bit sweeter, but I like the potent flavor of the white onion, which is why I like to use it in the fried rice. I mean, it just adds a nice kick of flavor to it. That's mainly why I use it. And also for the green onions, you can actually add the actual greener part of it later on in the rice when you're finished and mixing it in. But I like to actually cook mine down. So traditionally, most people would just save the green part for later. But for me, I like cooking it in the rice. And guys, if you don't have the hot soy sauce, use some of the scotch bonnet pepper or you can use habanero. Whatever is really closest to you in the area you're living in. Really, pretty much anything works. You just want a pepper that has good flavor to it and it's not just spice. So everything is coming along nicely. Now it's time to give my bacon another stir. So guys, learning how to multitask saves you a world of time, especially when you're cooking. You have to learn how to do different things at once. So you can reduce your wait time and actually get to eat faster. Because for me, that's one of the goals. I, I don't like being in the kitchen for too long. I like to cook, but I like it when I can get my food fast. I don't think someone should have to be in the kitchen for three hours just to make a meal. Unless you're making one of those pot roasts or slow cooked pork and everything or something similar. In which way you should leave the kitchen if you're making those and just let it cook. But some people, they like to stay in the kitchen and monitor a lot of things, even when they know it won't burn or anything like that. But yeah, I, I don't make it a practice to stay in the kitchen for too long, guys. So there we have it. Our seasonings are cut up. And with time to spare, too, our bacon is still cooking. So what I'm going to do is actually get my eggs ready. Just cracking them and opening them, you know, all that good stuff. I'm going to get these washed off too because I'm not washing any dishes after I'm done, guys. I'm going to just eat. You guys already know I don't like to 
leave any work on hand for myself. So this is what I'm going to do. So there we have our eggs. We're just going to stir this around, mix it together properly. And I do like to season my eggs with some black pepper. No salt, because everything is going to be pretty much seasoned, so we don't really need to use the extra salt. So just a little black pepper. And we just whisk this around. So perfect. Now we just check back in on our bacon. And it's cooking up really nicely, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mommy Yvonne, the special fried rice is on its way. All right, guys. So, it's finally time to get our bacon out of the pot. Got a nice color going to it. And we have our beautiful bacon grease left over. Which is going to provide so much flavor for this dish. Now, guys, we don't need all of this oil for the section of this that we're about to do because we're actually going to stir fry the chicken next. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a container that I can put some of this oil into and save it for when I'm actually stir frying the rest of the stuff. So I'm actually just going to get the rest of it into this pan over here. So I just have it to the side for when I'm ready for it. And now we're good to go. It's time to add our chicken into the pot. So let's just plop that in there right now. You can see the soy sauce actually stuck to the chicken, so there's no runniness to it or anything like that. So when it marinates, that's what it's going to look like. And this chicken is going to have a really nice color to it. So we're doing this on high heat, so you want to keep stirring this, guys. Just to make sure that the chicken is going to get evenly cooked.
Now, like I said, when you cut it this way, it doesn't take very long to cook. So we're just going to give it a few more minutes and then we can actually remove it from the stove. All right, guys, so now it's time to actually get our chicken out of the pot. I'm just going to turn my flame down and get these out of the pot. I'm just going to put it in the same plate that I have my bacon in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is looking nice. And now we're actually going to be adding in some more of our bacon grease that was left. And we're going to be stir frying our seasonings. Now I'm going to get that heat back up. And I'm going to add these in just right away. You're just gonna stir fry these until they're a bit translucent, which won't take long because, like I said, I turned my heat back up, so it's not gonna take that much time. Just make sure you don't burn anything and you'll be fine. going to move this to one side of the pot. Now what a lot of people would do is they'd actually make their egg first and then set it off to the side. But I'm doing this the quickest way possible guys and easiest. So I'm just doing everything in one pot. I'm not going to remove it after this. We're just going to leave it there in the pot. Now I'm just scrambling it in here. Like I said, guys, I'm hungry and I want to eat, so just doing this in the most efficient way possible. You can actually mix this up. And you want to make sure you're breaking your egg up at the same time. Make sure it's scrambled well, and it actually does work out pretty well. So, 
This is what you're going to be working with in your pot. And this is the point where we're going to start adding in our actual rice. I got it from out of the fridge, so I'm going to start adding it in and putting my soy sauce to work. So we're just going to get this in here. This is our first amount of rice. And you just want to make sure you separate it because it does take the shape of the container when you put it in the fridge. So yeah. It's going to stir that up in there. And we start off by adding in our soy sauce from here. Like I said, if you're making a smaller amount of rice, you wouldn't have to really do it in separate sections. But because I'm making so much rice, I'm, I'm, I'm actually using a bigger pot and I'm going to be doing the soy sauce in sections just to make sure everything is blended out really well and every single grain of rice gets coated properly. So we start off with our first bit of soy sauce. And you still want to keep your heat on a pretty high one. Not too high, just like, let's just say medium heat. Because we don't want it to be a case where the rice takes too long to get coated. Because like I said, you're taking it from the fridge and it's going to be cold when you do that. So you just want to make sure that you're getting everything into the pot, coated and cooked up properly. So you don't end up having any sections of cold rice when you're doing your stuff. Hmm. Yes, sir. -y. This is looking fantastic already. Now we're going to add in some more rice. So the more I look at this, the more I wish I had three, um, four pounds of rice. But we just have to work with what we have to work with. So like I said, sections where we're not adding in too much at a time. Just going to get this all mixed up. Must have been. So what I did notice, guys, is that this hot soya sauce is actually more salty than the regular one. So I don't want to use too much of it. But this is what we're looking at so far. I'm just going to get everything coated and see where we go from there. All right. So this is looking pretty nice and smelling nice already. Mommy Ivan actually got up to hold the camera. So you guys know what that means. She wants me to get it done quicker. Foodie. Is this the same person that's telling me I'm going to be big and fat when I'm older? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Guys, parents always tell you that you eat too much or you do some of this too much or that too much. But then when you turn around and look at what they're doing, oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, mommy Yvonne. You're not supposed to be eating this. You're not supposed to be eating this. I'm younger. That that doesn't really affect me. 
I'm allowed to eat. It's not healthy. Huh. I caught you there. Well, twice in a blue moon because you ate it on the live last night. <laughs> yeah, I caught you there, didn't I? I caught you there. Uh huh. So you say. But we'll see, guys. We'll see. All right. I need to add a dash more of my soy sauce. Like I said, I gotta make sure everything is coated. Yes, mommy, Ivan. But I go on with things. I don't know too much. 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 What do you mean? Well, you can eat, so you eat more army, you know? Huh? You eat enough more army. Because I'm still growing. I mean, not height-wise. Like, I'm I'm growing in other ways, so I need the food. I will be gone, fuck. <sighs> when my metabolism slows down, then I'll eat less. But for now, yeah. You know, you know this already. Like, I, I get hungry so easily. Like, even if I just eat, I get hungry pretty soon again, so I just have to work with what my body tells me, guys. <laughs> Look at this beauty! Guys, I'm telling you, this fried rice is gonna be one of the best you've ever eaten. And nothing beats the simplicity of this one right here. It's so, so simple. You can make it for dinner just on its own. You don't have to serve any form of main dish with it. This can just be the main dish as is. So it's absolutely fantastic. That's why I love it so much. I miss our veneers, but I get a pay for the money after go back. I do a good something that better more I go sport you out. <laughs> Not what I mean. That yeah, is literally the only reason I'm going to be working. I want to make sure I have enough food in my house, my bills are paid, and I have a comfortable life, okay? I mean, if you're working and you can't eat a plate of good food, what's the sense? No sense. There is another too much rice with me I put in my pot. I don't know if she should have put four pounds. I mean, what's the issue with the four pounds? Hmm? It can hold in the pot. I know that it can. No, it can hold in the pot. From it can hold in the pot, guys, it's never too much, right? See? There's so much space left in the pot, and you're telling me four pounds is too much. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. Well, I guess you say what can make me feel this way fried rice talking about fried rice fried rice fried rice yeah i've got so much bacon and the pork <laughs> waiting well okay so we still have a little left over to go so these parts on top right here they're gonna get coated when this goes in so no need to worry about that don't worry be happy 
When I'm a little less Wait, hungry, I'll be happy. No. What? There's rice in the plate. No, Look. I am not wasting any grains of rice, okay? You know what people went through to make this rice? So that we could have it to eat. I am not wasting a single bit. Awful. <laughs> no, I'm not. I just don't like to be wasteful. I mean, can you guys blame me for that? It's fried rice. Guys, one more pound of rice could hold in here. Mommy Ivan, see what I mean? I have made the four pounds in this pot before. And it fits perfectly. As long as I can close the pot lid, guys, then it's perfect for the pot, right? So even if it's to the brim of the pot, it's still perfect. And the reason why I didn't add in my chicken and bacon, remember the rice is steaming as you go along and the pot is actually still cooking. So I didn't want my rice to cook with that in it. I don't want these meats to actually get overcooked. So I just add it in when I'm close to finishing this up. A dream is a wish your heart makes. You know, I actually dreamt about this. <laughs> I actually dreamt about this. I craving, she craving, saying that she had dream about food. I can't control my dreams. Tell my subconscious that. I actually dreamt about this last night, guys. I know I was planning to make it. And my mind just went ahead and gave me a table laid out with bacon fried rice and some mala chicken and a bunch of other stuff, which was absolutely fantastic. One of the best dreams ever. Only downside to it is I woke up hungry. I felt like a prisoner that just escaped and haven't had a good plate of food in years. Well, you're rough. <laughs> I know, right? Sad. Like, I woke up this morning feeling like I haven't eaten for days, weeks, months. Those are the only downsides to food dreams, guys. They're nice while you're in them, but when you wake up, it's horrible. And now it's time to add in our holy grill, the chicken and our bacon. Bada bada hey. Oy Let it heat up a little bit more. Just to make sure all those flavors are sunk and in into that rice. Then we're going to actually plate it and eat. Alright guys, so I have Papa Errol here right now. Yeah man. I got to try out the fried rice. Yeah man, just come in the step that kill me. You know, we take out a little bit meat and some of it already, you know guys, you know. Big thanks and I eat some of it already, so. I tell you how it tastes, you know guys. Can I tell you say, nice, you know. Yeah man. Very nice. That's just the other taste. Yeah man. Bacon in it. How about chicken? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, guys, I tell you. It's nice guys, I tell you. Yeah man, with them. We really know where my mama is, I tell you. No. Wonderful again, guys. Don't miss a talk. We don't, we don't only every talk, you know, but one of the day, guys. Some you guys will get to taste yeah, it yourself. Yeah, guys, you know, man. Yeah, man, I tell you, man, we go <laughs> wonderful fried rice, guys. And this one, killer, this one, the bacon. Very nice, guys. I try it out, man. But, guys, I tell you, no. all the best until we reach here, you know, guys. Yeah, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And catch you again. And if I'm with me, if you're another sumptuous meal, that is it. Yeah. Then you can put it here with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pack it down with some spread. Yeah, see that? Good old spread. That is it. Bless up on yourself, guys. I ain't close doors, I'm a full fuck.